Well, thankfully, in yesterday's episode, we bounced back from back to back defeats and did pick up wins against two teams up in the promotion hunt today. We take on the team currently on top of the table in Dynamo Dresden. Can we close the gap going into the second half of the season? Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today yet again. We take on two teams right up in the promotion hunt on the free league table first up. It should be a game. We are capable of winning at home as we do take on sixth place SV Elversburg. And then off the back of that, as I said, we take on the team so far this season who have been on top for the most part. In Dynamo Dresden away from home, so if you're looking forward to those two games in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we have just played the one game since yesterday's episode, as I mentioned, two good wins, especially with what was happening before those games. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner, hopefully a little while until I have to pronounce those team names yet again, but no doubt the way that Urgzeburger are going just behind us on the league table. We might have to play those guys on camera yet again a little bit later in the season, but it does mean we are still in second spot off the back of the one game that we have played since yesterday's episode. It was against Rottweiss Essen away from home, and unfortunately we did concede a 90th minute equaliser in this game. They did equalise twice after we got an early goal through Ricardo Grimm and one not too long off the back of their first goal through Farid Abdulamane, but unfortunately they did grab an equaliser. If we go and look at the stats, it's hard to argue they did not deserve something from that game. As you can see, it was quite an even battle. We just edged most things, but in the end of draw, probably a fair result. So unfortunately, off the back of those two good results in yesterday's episode, that one was just a little bit more frustrating, but thankfully we do still hold on to second spot on the league table, albeit only one point now clear of Urzgeburger and one point back to Magdeburg. So it's still a pretty good race at the moment going on for the promotion spots in this free league, but Dynamo Dresden at the moment do have a little gap on the rest of us. Hopefully we can pick that back somewhat in that second game of today's episode. But thankfully, as you may have seen in that last game, we did have some players come back from injury, and particularly on Heinke. So he is now fit and available for this next little stretch until we do get to the winter break come the end of December. So thankfully it does mean a bit stronger now in the defensive midfield. Unfortunately though, as you would have just seen before, Eric Bufak is still out with an injury, probably won't feature in either of the games in today's episode, albeit as we mentioned yesterday, not too big a deal. He is just our emergency wing back option these days here at Locomotive Leipzig. But in terms of the actual squad going in to this next game, Kevin Zizek has not been performing well up front for us. There you can see the last five games and the average rating. He might be covering those, in fact. The average rating is a 6.95, but the last five games only a 6.5. So for this game coming up, the first one of today's episode, where we do take on Elversburg. I am making a change up front. We're going to start Ziani like we did last season. And hopefully that just gives us a little bit more going forward in these upcoming games because Zizek has not really been doing a good job for us. I've been trying to use him in a few different roles, like a pressing forward as well at times, instead of an advanced forward to see if that will help get him going. But unfortunately, so far, just four goals in the 14 games this season. Does feel like we can get a little bit more out of our striker, Ziani. We'll get a crack up front in this upcoming game. And if he does well, we'll also get a run in that second game, the top of the table clash, but going into the first game of today's episode, we are taking on SV Elversburg. They are doing a little bit better than the media prediction suggested, albeit the last two games. They have suffered defeats and two teams that we did beat earlier in the season in Ingolstadt and plus and Munster. So hopefully at home, this is a game that we can get back to winning ways. And then off the back of that, only one week later, the big game in today's episode, we take on Dynamo Dresden. And they were a team predicted to finish second. They are on top. And as I said at the moment, doing things quite comfortably, as you can see, in a very good run of form. No doubt that should continue 
going into that game as they take on Plus and Monster, even though that is away from home. But hopefully, if we can pick up a result against those guys in the second game of today's episode, we can close the gap on them on top of the free league table. But no doubt that does look like it will be one of our toughest tests this season here in the free league, the way that those guys are going. But hopefully, we can continue to pick up points and get back on track after those defeats that we did have going in to yesterday's episode. And we'll come back shortly and get stuck into the action for our home game today as we take on SV Alversburg. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. We ran through hours before, as I said, just that one change. Ziani does come in for Zizek. Also, of course, Heinke is back after he missed some games. In yesterday's episode, Alversburg, they are playing a 4-2-3-1, but as I said, coming to this one, having lost to some teams we beat earlier in the season, so hopefully at home, we can pick up three more points and just put a little bit of pressure on Dynamo Dresden going into that second game of today's episode. And four minutes into this one, the first highlight is a corner here in our favour. We look far post, and Heinke does not get his head on the end of that, but apparently he was pushed, and a good early chance here for us to strike from the penalty spot, it will be Ziani who will step up to take this one. The goalkeeper goes the right way, but thankfully just sneaks that one under the body. He picks up his second goal of the season. Both of those have come from the penalty spot, and that could be just what we need to get off to a good start. And this one, our striker gets on the score sheet nice and early, and from the spot, we go 1-0 up. And only a few minutes off the back of that opening goal. Now we do have a free kick here inside the final third, albeit the opposition there do head that one away in Alversburg, but we do win it back here, and Abdulamane will play that one back to replay. Now, Heinke does lose out on position there to Jacobson, but thankfully, poor pass there as they do look to do something on the counter attack. Now, Grimm can try and find some space here. Down this right-hand side, that was a big chance there for Ziani. Puts it wide, though, so we are still only 1-0 up. And about 10 minutes off the back of that previous highlight, now we have a corner yet again looking far post there. For Leon Heinke, it's an absolute scramble there inside the box, but Jamal Ziani will poke it home. It's a ugly, ugly goal, but Ziani looking like his goal-scoring touch at the moment a little bit better than Kevin Zizek, and that is exactly what we want to bring him into the starting lineup for this game. Maybe that will just help us turn some of these draws and losses we have had recently into wins. A pretty ugly goal, but thankfully we do put the ball. In the back of the net, he is already on a hat trick only 20 minutes into this one, albeit another highlight does come here right off the back of that goal from the restart. And Albersburg here do get a chance to do something as they do start to camp inside of our half. They try and play a ball over the top, but thankfully Reblay is there to tidy things up. Actually picks out a Tilgan there quite nicely down that left-hand side. Now Abdulamane does lose out on position, but thankfully they just hoofed that one straight into the path of Eagle Zeta. And now we do get it out to Awosu down this right-hand side. Looks like there's a bit too much pace there for his defender, albeit it's blocked that ball. But we get it back through Abdurrahmane. Picks out a Tilgan. It's a lovely chest onto his foot. He picks up his first goal of the season. It's taken him a little while compared to last season. And what a start this has been. We'll praise the boys. 3-0, only 21 minutes into this one already. Looks like a game where we should be picking up all three points that went a very nice finish from that ball from Abdurrahmane, and we're already cruising with a 3-0 lead. And that was it for the first half in this home game in today's episode, and obviously stoked with how that first half went, especially the first part of that first half. Nothing of note happening off the back of that third goal, but a double to Ziani, one of those being from the penalty spot, the other a little bit scrappy off the back of a corner, but thankfully did still pick up a goal and right off the back of that. Some really good play, nice finish from Atilgan, and obviously quite happy with how this one is going, no changes needed, and hopefully we can keep it up in the second half, we get it back underway, 3-0 up. And only a few minutes into the second half, Leon Heinke has just picked up a yellow card, which we might deal with shortly, seeing as he is coming back from a recent injury, but the first highlight here is a free kick to Alversburg, and they try and do something here down this left-hand side, Turpitz tries to do his man there, and just makes his way onto the edge of the box. There was a chance there, it felt for us, to try and clear that ball, but thankfully that shot does go fairly well wide of the post by the looks of it. And off the back of that yellow card, we will bring on Piplica with our first substitution in the second half. 
And only about five minutes off back of that first highlight, yet again, Aldersburg here do have one, but thankfully we clear it away, albeit not quite weak enough there for Owosu to win the race to that before one of the Aldersburg players. Now Ernesto heads that one away, but again, into the path of one of their players, and Timmy Taylor, who I believe played for a club down the region in the Liga Nordos last season and scored some goals against us. He gets on the score sheet. Did actually look like a Dogan there. Might have almost helped that one into the net. So a little bit of a frustrating goal to concede to be fair. Probably was going to the top left corner, even if he didn't get a touch on that one. But they grab a goal back to make it 3-1 with around a half hour left. And in fact, another highlight starts right off the back of that goal back to the opposition. A free kick in our favour, but we do get it back through Owosu off the back of that being blocked. Big chance there for Ziani, but unfortunately, good save there from the Elversburg goalkeeper. And then they do clear that one away as we try to get something going at that far post. Now a corner trying to pick out Piplica, but unfortunately the goalkeeper does come out to claim that one. And we are still 3-1 up with a half hour left. And there's a flurry of highlights at the moment in this game. Only a few minutes off the back of that double highlight before we do now have a throw in inside the final third. Hopefully we can get our free goal lead back and that should be enough for us to make sure we do take home all three points. Otherwise, this game could get interesting in this last half hour or so. And they try and do something here again down this left-hand side. They try and make their way inside the box. Roche with a shot. Thankfully this time, though, that one pretty safe into the path of Issa Dogan. He will tip it over, albeit another corner here for a team who are showing a bit more in the second half than they did in the first. But thankfully, we do deal with that danger. Hopefully. That is all that we need to worry about in this highlight, albeit some good short passing here. They make their way inside the box, but thankfully Piplica does win that ball back for us. Still free one up as we're about to enter the last 20 minutes. And just inside the last 20 minutes now, we do have another highlight starting here. It is a free kick taken by the goalkeeper for Elversburg, and they do try and make their way out from the back, but some good work there from a lot of the players there for us. They sandwich the opposition up, and we do win the ball back, and eventually make our way into the opposition half, albeit Ziani there looking for a hat-trick. Does just lose position, but that is a really poor pass. Natilgan gets it back for us, and big chance there for Ricardo Grimm. Very unselfish from Ziani on a hat-trick, but again, the goalkeeper coming up with some big saves in the second half, which might keep his team in the game if they can grab one more goal in the second half, but it does look like that will be that highlight. Still 3-1 with around about 15 minutes left, and while we are here, we'll make some substitutions. A few players down to Red Hearts, Mike Iwosu to Ogbidi can come on for him, and also, while we are here, we'll also take off replay on a 6.7 for Linus Zimmer, to hopefully make sure that we can hold on to all three points. And we're just about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this game, and as you can see, a few more players have dropped down to Red Hearts. We do still have two substitutions left. We're going to bring on Lampdy, for search, that one's an obvious one. Now, with the rest of our substitutions, there is no right back option on the bench. But Julian Weigel, I think we can bring on because Piplica can play left back. Zimmer can go out right. And it does mean that Weigel can have a spell here in the defensive midfield. Just shuffling things up a little bit late in this game. But we are still a free one ahead. And very late in this game now, it does look like we are going to hold on here to pick up a win off the back of those free goals nice and early. In that first half, the opposition did grab one back here in the second half, and a poor missed header there at the back by them. And Ricardo Grimm from a tight angle will tuck that one away. Issa Dogan gets an assist, which is a very rare feat here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, and that will definitely put the cherry on top of this one 4 1. We do get that free goal advantage back that we did build up in the first half. Abdulamane missed his header, but thankfully, so did the Elversburg defence. Ziani just shuffled that one on nicely there for Grimm, it looked like, albeit Dogen did get that assist, and that makes it 4-1, and now that we do enter three minutes of injury time, there is one more highlight, albeit not too sure this one is going to affect the outcome at all, but Elversburg here are in position to try to do something down this left-hand side, and Taylor does get in behind and buries that one, bottom right corner, here's a player, I believe if it's the same one, who's building up quite a good goal-scoring record against us now. Hopefully, that does not continue the next time that we do play these guys, especially as that one might be tougher away from home. But Timmy Taylor puts that one away and cancels out that goal 
that we did just score, but still should be safe now with only one minute left to pick up a 4-2 win. So in the end, quite a few goals in that first game of today's episode. We are starting to concede a few more than we did in the first part of the season, but thankfully are still scoring enough to pick up wins in particular. Might have been important that we did bring Ziani in for a start in this game, got those first two goals, and they may have been the difference makers in this one, even though they were quite scratchy goals, one from the penalty spot and then one from a scramble off back of a corner. But thankfully, we do pick up all three points, albeit so do Dynamo Dresden. And that does mean the gap is still four points. But now we have four points clear of the teams behind us as we go into that second game of today's episode, a top of the table clash away from home. And not so fast before we get into that second game of today's episode, because unfortunately, a rather big injury has come here in the inbox, a training session, must have been some training session, because following a fall, Lucas Search has a lower back stress fracture. He will be out for two months, which does mean we won't see him until after the winter break. So that is a bit of a big injury for us. That's probably our first choice centre back who will be missing for these next few games until we do get, as I said, into that winter break. And that might make our task a little bit tougher in this top of the table clash. And here are the team sheets for that top of the table clash off the back of that injury update that we did need to give you guys. It obviously means we're going to shuffle things up a little bit at the back because we don't have a choice. But Dynamo Dresden in very good form. Lamptey comes in for search and also Zaruba makes his way onto the bench. But otherwise, same team as we did put out in that prior 4-2 win. And hopefully we can grab something here even though we're away from home at the league leaders. And we get an early highlight in this game as well. Only two minutes in Dynamo Dresden today. Are in the yellow, we are in the grey, and they have the ball here down this left hand side. Good chance for them there, but thankfully that header does come off the post, and Ziani does just shuffle that one deep to stop that highlight. But early doors, we are on the back foot, but thankfully still nil all. And going forward to the 10 minute mark, this next highlight hopefully will be in our favour. It's a free kick, it does go our way. Obviously, you would have seen before during that last highlight as well. Awosu did pick up a yellow card, but poor passing for us there does give Dynamo Dresden a chance here to do something on the counter-attack. They do win it back, even though we actually got it back briefly there for a moment. Now, Maya in space down that left-hand side, and Julius Cade somehow ends up with that ball and buries it in that left-hand side of goal. It did look like there that Mark Lamptey did get some of a touch on that when that ball was played into the mixer, but unfortunately, just gave away position there far too easily when we did have the ball in our own half of the field, and Dynamo Dresden do hit us on the counter-attack, albeit somewhat fortunate, but we do go 1-0 down just after the 10-minute mark. And only around five minutes off the back of that opening goal down the end here, yet again for a free kick. They get a hit on the end of that one, but thankfully that one does just go wide, but early doors, we are well and truly on the back foot in this one. Thankfully, still only 1-0 down. And that was it for the first half in this top of the table clash, and at the moment, we look like we are well and truly the second best team in this game, as you can tell by the stats. Dynamo Dresden are all over us. We so far have only got three shots off in this game and none on target. We are pretty fortunate to only be 1-0 down based on those stats, but thankfully that is the case. Hopefully with some changes, we can work our way back into this game in the second half. As you can see, a few players on yellow cards, they will come off. Also Heinke only on a 6.4, so because of that, we'll bring on Zimmer and Ogbidi for the yellow carded players in replay and Awosu, and also we can bring on Piplica in place of Leon Heinke, but not impressed with that first half. We'll give the boys a little bit of a spray here at halftime, and hopefully show a bit more, and try and grab an equaliser, as we are 1-0 down at Dynamo Dresden. And it's only taken five minutes in the second half for the first highlight, unfortunately it does look like this one might be in the favour of our opposition yet again, they find some space in behind our defence there, down that right-hand side, tight angle, so thankfully Isn't Dogen does make a decent save, but it's fair to say we are still on the back foot in this game, just not creating anything. And we have just picked up some yellow cards as well in pretty quick succession. Linus Zimmer did just come on at half time, so we won't take him off, but Ziani not doing quite so well as in that first game of today's episode. Hopefully Kevin Zizek can perform better in a bench impact role, but still well and truly on the back foot and 1-0 down with just over a half hour left. 
And only a few minutes off the back of that substitution, it is now a free kick here to Donmo Dresden. Thankfully this time we do head that one away, but they get it back and have some space here to do something now down that left-hand side. Maya with lots of space to find his way here inside the box. We do somewhat deal with that one, albeit a bit fortunate. And now Zizek is on the ball and a chance for us here to finally do something on the counter-attack, but a poor pass there from Atilgan does give the ball back to Dynamo Dresden so far in this one. Just not on our game. That is a good chance, and Julius Cade will grab a double, albeit thankfully was actually offside, but so far it's our errors that are leading to goals in this game. And to be fair, that might be a little bit fortunate, but we will take it, no doubt. There's been some of that go against us so far in the save, but thankfully still only 1-0 down. And in fact, while we are here, we might make a substitution as well because of Tilgan, who did give that ball away when we were looking to do something on the counter, down to a 6.4. Don Bravo can come on for him with our last substitution. And yet again, only a few minutes off the back of that sub, it is now a throw in here to Dynamo Dresden inside the final third. We eventually clear that one. Unfortunately, Zizek, though, can't quite get to it before the Dresden defenders. And they do something here again down this right-hand side. Good tackle there from Abdulamane, but unfortunately just skews out so the player can recollect the ball. Now a Koto, good pace there, and that was actually a decent header, which looked destined for that top left corner, but thankfully Issa Dogen comes up with a good diving save in this highlight. We'll continue, still only 1-0 down, but unfortunately Abdurrahmane can't control that as he did look to try and flick that one on, but all we need in this game is a goal to escape with a very undeserved point, and there is still just under a half hour left to try and do that, but Okoto there with a shot, thankfully, comes off the crossbar, but as I said earlier, so far in this game, we are just doing nothing, lucky to only be 1-0 down. And we make our way all the way forward to the 88 minute mark for the next highlight in this game, as you can see, we are now on attacking, also some of these players on more positive duties than they were earlier in the game, but thankfully still only one goal down, and hopefully, now that we are attacking, we can grab a goal back late, in this game, albeit it would still be a pretty undeserved one, but unfortunately, we can't keep the ball there inside of the final third, and there's a chance here now for Dynamo Dresden to do something on the counter attack. It's fair to say they should really be winning this game by more than 1-0, and maybe they can make it to as a Koto. Way too much pace here for our defense, but thankfully it's a Dogen there, just tips that one over the bar from a tight angle. There's four minutes here of added time, hopefully. We can do something in those four minutes, but it's looking pretty unlikely. Just really been struggling all over the park in this game. Thankfully, as I said, only conceded that one goal. But we do make our way now into injury time. It might be actually time for us to just throw everyone on attack. We did actually try the central midfielders on support instead of attack for the latter stages of this one, just to see if that would help us out a little bit, but doesn't look like it is. So now all those four players can be on an attacking duty, but unfortunately, we were just outclassed in that one. It is fair to say, look at the stats, we did absolutely nothing. Dynamo Dresden, unlucky to only score the one goal, but we still got played off the park in that one, and it does mean that those guys will now open up a bit of a gap on top of the free league table, off the back of what was a pretty disappointing 1-0 defeat there in that top of the table clash. And back in the inbox of that, that top of the table clash in that second game of today's episode where we got absolutely thumped. There's no two ways about that. Thankfully, though, picked up three points in that game before. So it does mean that still we are in second on the free league table, but now really condensed in around those promotion spots between us, Erzgebirge and Magdeburg. And a big gap now to Dynamo Dresden, who are seven points there. Hopefully, we can keep ourselves right in that promotion fight going in to the winter break, but I think that will do it for today's episode. As I said, a really poor loss there to Dynamo Dresden. Those guys just look a lot better than us, and that might mean they're a lot better than all the teams in this division, but thankfully before that, we did beat Elversburg 4-2 at home. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow and play some more games right before that winter break. Our next couple of games we're going to play off camera. We take on the teams in 18th and 20th. So you'd like to think those are games we can pick up wins in. But off the back of that, 
Victoria Cologne at home. That could be interesting with those guys currently in sixth. And of course, that was the team who did sign Oliver Burks from us when he was not on contract back at the start of the season. So that could be a bit of a revenge job before hopefully we can pick up the double against an Ingle Star team who at the time we did upset on the opening match day. And off the back of that, just one more game before we do enter the winter break here. In the free league, so we'll come back for those two games tomorrow before we do head into the winter break. And we'll probably come back for that in the last episode at the end of this week. And if we do any transfer business, also cover that off as well. But tomorrow, we'll play a few games before we do into that break against Victoria Cologne and Ingolstadt, both at home. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Thought I could do this, left through the sand.